Good afternoon, everybody. It's kind of loud. Um, yeah, I guess I'm the last one. Uh, so thank you all for uh, kind of making it this far throughout the day. It ended up being beautiful weather. So I'm going to talk to you today about um, kind of everyday toxins that probably should have been the title of this lecture, but I thought of the Toby Keith song, A Little Less Talk and a Lot More Action, and so I threw in A Little Less Talks and a Lot More Action. I thought it was clever, and I mentioned it to my wife, and she just kind of looked at me, and uh, I thought, well, maybe I should have called it Everyday Toxins, and then I misspelled little, but so anyways. Uh, I'm Dr. Greg Dennis. I'm a family practice physician in uh, Mustang, Oklahoma. Uh, like Dr. Meehan, I've been reformed. Uh, I used to practice conventional, uh, you know, what we call evidence-based medicine, uh, which is kind of a joke. That's a whole topic in and of itself. Uh, and I, you know, had a, was in corporate medicine, had a huge panel of patients and did everything by the book. And I, one day I was just kind of fortunate that I took a step back and, and kind of analyzed my patients. And I thought, you know, they're really not any better. Uh, even though I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, their labs look good, uh, but they're just, they're still sick and they're still overweight and they're still dying of heart attacks and strokes and their diabetes isn't any better. And so uh, it made me, uh, you know, kind of go on a venture of really uh, understanding what it means to be healthy. And the more I went down that road, the more I realized that uh, what we're taught in medical school, again, like what Dr. Meehan mentioned, is really just ab about making money. I tell people all the time that our healthcare system uh, is a money-making machine. It cares nothing about your health or my health. Um, by the way, with Dr. Meehan, I don't know if he can hear me. Every time I hear him talk, it makes me want to like put war paint on my face and grab a sword and like go fight the bad people. So uh, I love his passion. Uh, so anyways, uh, I, I kind of went on this self venture to learn how to make people well. Uh, and then that, uh, and, you know, kind of got me, uh, you know, to get more formal education, get certified in age management medicine, which is basically kind of anti-aging medicine where we help people, uh, you know, just not only live longer, but, um, improve their health span and learning about all this health and wellness. I just couldn't get enough of it. And so I started a podcast a couple of years ago called fit RX, F I T R X. So, uh, we talk, you know, a lot about health and wellness and nutrition and, and all kinds of things. And that's actually how I met, uh, Sandra through that. Uh, okay. So, uh, I know this is the last one here. Uh, some of this information is probably repetitive from the previous speakers. So I'll kind of try to breeze through some of this stuff. So, uh, so we're going to talk about toxins. So what is a toxin? It's basically a poisonous substance that uh, is a product of metabolic activities when introduced into the body. Uh, it's capable of introducing um, antibody or inducing antibody formation. Uh, so who cares? Uh, why does it matter? Um, I'm going to rush through these last or these next few slides. Uh, but six out of ten uh, Americans have uh, at least one chronic disease. Um, this is in millions. It's estimated in, in 2030, 171 million Americans uh, will have, again, at least one chronic illness. Um, this is ADD prevalence, uh, attention deficit disorder. You can see starting in the late 90s, just a continued rise. Uh, this is autism, again, just you know, a continued rise. And we see this, again, in chronic illness. We see it in uh, things like autism. We see it in everything. So, uh, Kind of in summary, we're, we're getting uh, sicker uh, as a nation, and that's probably no, no surprise to anyone here. Now, we can't just say, you know, toxins in and of themselves are the culprit of this, but they uh, are certainly a large contributor. And so where do toxins come from? Uh, you know, everywhere. Uh, and, and again, that's kind of the, the, the title of this is Everyday Toxins. Um, we're exposed to it all the time. I'm going to kind of focus on three areas uh, toxins that we put on our body, ones in our home and those in food. And then we'll maybe, I'll, I'll give you hopefully some uh, practical steps about how we can improve this. So as far as on our body, uh, I, I start with sunscreen because most people think of sunscreen as being very benign. Uh, you know, we put sunscreen on our kids so they don't get sunburnt uh, and and. So we always tell our kids, put sunscreen on, put sunscreen on. But do you know what's in the sunscreen? 
Um, I'm not going to go through all these, um, but there's a lot of bad stuff in sunscreen, uh, several of which um, are potentially carcinogenic. Um, let's see, one of them in particular here. Uh, Yeah, I can't remember which one it was I was going to highlight. But um, anyway, I think these slides are available. Um, and what I would encourage you um, on looking at sunscreens, looking at cosmetics, look at the ingredients and educate yourself about those ingredients. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, cosmetics. Um, so these are just cosmetics that we use every day. Okay, Shampoo, deodorant, hairspray. Okay, Nobody thinks about them. Uh, potentially being harmful. Um, unfortunately, they're full of heavy metals. They're full of phthalates, which I'm going to define here in just a second, and you know all kinds of other uh, chemicals. Um, so while we're on phthalates, so this is going to keep coming up. Phthalates are endocrine disrupting chemicals that can interfere with normal growth and development. Research shows that this can be especially devastating for males during reproductive stage. They're also considered to be uh, uh, reproductive toxins affecting both male fertility and the quality of their sperm. Uh, animal studies also show that phthalates may be carcinogenic with an affinity to breast tissue and liver. Uh, so things that contain phthalates, air fresheners, dish, show, dish soap, tissues, laundry detergent, pretty much anything with a fragrance. Um, Cleaning products, I skipped over that. Again, a lot of times they have phthalates. Uh, I mentioned air. Uh, I think previous speakers have talked about mold, but again, when we're talking about toxins in our home, uh, you know, just the air that we breathe is something that we need to be thinking about. Is there potential mold, uh, you know, in the house, other things that may be polluting our, our air? Water. Uh, everyone talks about we need to drink our water, and we do, but if you're on city water, it's going to be, uh, there's a whole lot of chemicals in here that I listed, but uh, two of them that I highlight are fluoride and chlorine um, that's in about any uh, treated water. Uh, cookware. Uh, so aluminum that, you know, pans that we reheat, uh, this can leach into the food. Uh, they've been linked to nervous system damage and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, Teflon, everyone is familiar with that, with the, the non-stick. Uh, it's one of the most to toxic chemicals uh, you potentially find in your kitchen. Studies show that Teflon has been shown to release at least six toxic gases when heated, with several of those being carcinogenic. Uh, okay, so also in our home... Uh, we have EMF. Uh, I found a, a, a graph later after I'd already put these slides together, but um, today compared to, I believe it was the 1940s, uh, we are, I believe it was 100 million times uh, more exposed to EMF than we were back in the 1940s. Uh, so it's it's just here. It is what it is. It's not something we can get away from. Uh, again, I'll mention maybe some steps to, to limit that in a little bit. Uh, Food storage, um, so plastics full of BPA, BPS, and again, phthalates, uh, especially when heated. Uh, styrofoam uh, also, um, chemical called styrene, I think somebody mentioned it earlier. Uh, and when heated, those that uh, styrene can leach into your liquid and you're basically ingesting that. And so unfortunately, what do we put uh, in styrofoam cups? We put coffee. Um, uh, all right, so let's talk about food, um, and this, you know, could be a whole lecture in and of itself. Obviously, our, uh, our standard American diet uh, is, you know, SAD sad. It is very sad, uh, and I'm convinced that um, if we were to change um, our diet, we could cure uh, a good portion of the, the chronic illnesses in our uh, society. But uh, the food we eat is full of uh, pesticides. Uh, it's full of uh, uh, BHA, BHA, growth hormone. A lot of the meat you buy in the supermarket, okay? Uh, it's laden with growth hormone. Uh, dioxins or dioxin-like compounds. Uh, studies suggest that exposure to these may lead to a variety of adverse health effects, including reproductive developmental problems, cardiovascular disease, increased diabetes, and increased cancer. Uh, BP, BPA, once again, uh, uh, hormone disruptors. 
Sodium nitrite, or nitrate nitrite found in processed meats has been linked to cancer in some studies. Acrylamide, it's a chemical found in fried starchy foods like French fries, potato chips, as well as grains that have been cooked in high temperatures, according to the American Cancer Society. Um, they're kind of unclear, but the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified it as a probable human carcinogen. Uh, artificial uh, food coloring and dyes has been linked to uh, ADHD, and uh, every, everyone's heard of uh, GMOs uh, in the corn, soy, uh, cottonseed, canola oil, things like that. Uh, so uh, this is called the dirty dozen, and, and so a lot of people say, well, I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to start eating more fruits and vegetables. Well, um, so we have this. So the dirty dozen is the environmental working group uh, came out with the, the top 12 fruits and vegetables that contain uh, pesticides. So, you know, there's a lot of healthy foods on here. Strawberries, spinach, kale, tomatoes. Uh, unfortunately, um, you know, even when they're washed, they're, uh, they're very high in, in pesticides. So uh, this is the look I often get when, you know, talking about this kind of stuff or I'm talking to my patients about, you know, maybe changing some, some lifestyle because it, it really is overwhelming and a lot of times, you know, it makes us just want to throw our hands up and say, there, you know, everything I mentioned, again, that was a very broad overview, but they're like, well, I mean, that's, that's in everyday life. It's in our house, you know, it's in our food. Like, I, you know, there's, there's no getting better at this. Um, so what do we do? Uh, so what I tell people, the goal is education, not perfection, okay? Uh, unless, you know, we move to the Antarctica and, you know, we eat what we kill and, you know, completely, you know, free of society and, you know, there's just no getting around all these toxins that we're exposed to. But uh, educate yourself, okay? Know uh, what you're putting on your body. Know what you're uh, putting in your mouth. Um, know what's in your water, Okay. Uh, be aware of false advertising. Uh, the marketers are going to make it, you know, they just want to sell products. And so they're going to make everything look healthy, you know, whether it's a soap, whether it's uh, food, um, you know, they're, they're going to make it look healthy. So again, that goes back to educating yourself. Uh, make small changes. Okay. Uh, I don't want you to go home and like, you know, uh, completely take everything out, take all your dishes out and your, uh, your pantry and throw it away. I mean, that's not, going to be a lasting change. So do one thing at a time, very small steps. All right. So simple action steps as it pertains to the body, uh, try and switch to natural or organic cosmetics, dental care, soaps, etc. As a general rule of thumb, uh, look at the ingredients and ask yourself, would this be safe to eat? Okay. Uh, and if you don't know what the names are in there or you can't pronounce the ingredients, uh, my guess is it's probably would not be good to eat. Okay. So that's a good general rule. Uh, think about natural sunscreens. Uh, before we go to sunscreens, uh, I would say get outside, get sun. Everybody's scared to death of skin cancer, which it does exist, but I think we've gone too far the other way. Uh, now, you know, when you burn yourself, that's not good either, but, uh, you know, I very rarely put sunscreen on in the summertime. Uh, I get out, get the sun, and then I get back inside before I burn. Okay. Now there are certainly instances, instances, you know, if kids are out at whitewater all day. I mean, you got to have some sunscreen on. Okay. Uh, uh, but so if you have to do that, consider, um, more natural sunscreens. There's all kinds of, uh, different ones you can find online that you can make yourself at home. Uh, limit fragrances. Uh, most everything with the fragrance is going to have phthalates in it. Uh, and so I know it smells good. The shampoos, you know, the candles, all these things, they, they do smell good. Uh, try to limit it. Um, in the home, uh, think about using homemade cleaning products, such as just vinegar and water to clean your floors, cabinets. Open the windows when you can, especially when you're using those cleaning products. Uh, get more indoor plants. Plants are nat uh, natural uh, detoxifiers in the air. So uh, if you have the ability, put some plants in your house. Uh, water filters. Uh, 
I heard somebody say earlier this morning about reverse uh, osmosis. That's probably the best to drink. Uh, we recently got uh, a whole house water filter in our home. And so, um, uh, because I didn't like the fact that, you know, I was getting all the chlorine and stuff on me just in showers and stuff. So uh, those are quite expensive. Uh, but, you know, if you can at one point get a whole house uh, water filter, uh, that would be great. All right. I love this app. It's called Think Dirty and it's free. You can put it on your phone. And so you can uh, scan the barcode on just about any kind of uh, cleaning, uh, you know, product, um, I think foods, uh, all kinds of stuff. And it rates them uh, based on, you know, kind of the, the chemicals and the toxins that are in there. And if it's rated really low, it'll tell you why, because it's got phthalates in it or, you know, whatever. Uh, and so great little tool that uh, I think everybody should have on their phone. Again, it's free. All right. Uh, try and get rid of plastics, uh, especially those that are labeled three, six, and seven. Okay. Uh, try to store food in glass containers. Again, you don't have to do all this at once. Just, you know, kind of make small steps. Uh, cook with uh, cast iron, stainless steel, or... Um, uh, copper, especially stainless steel copper uh, coated pans. Okay. Uh, we want to try to limit EMF. Uh, again, we're not going to avoid this, but uh, what I do at my house is uh, I have our router on a timer. So it shuts off at, I think, 1030 uh, and comes back on at 6 or 630 in the morning. And so at least during that time while we're sleeping, Wi-Fi is off at our house. Okay, so I at least know I've got an eight-hour break. The other thing uh, I would encourage for you know you and your kids, uh, put your phone on airplane mode because most people sleep with their phone by them. Uh, put your phone on air, airplane mode uh, through the night to just try to limit some of that uh, Wi-Fi. As far as food, uh, we want to try and limit and avoid ultra-processed foods. Okay, so these are foods that have uh, multiple ingredients in them. Uh, so try to eat real food. I, I tell patients this on a daily basis. Uh, I mean, if I could give people one health tip, it's to eat real food. Uh, and I ask people that on my podcast uh, all the time. At, in closing, if you could give us one health tip, and there's a lot of good ones out there, but I would tell people eat real food. So real food Foods have one ingredient, okay? So they, they don't have labels on them most of the time. So eggs, they're, it's just an egg. Uh, steak, chicken, uh, you know, fish, uh, broccoli. You know, it's, it's real food. It doesn't have a label with 10 ingredients on it. Uh, organic when possible. Uh, you know, organic, unfortunately, is going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, but again, take baby steps. First, just... Maybe try to get out the processed stuff. Stay in the outside aisle of the grocery store because that's where all the real food is. Uh, and then eventually maybe um, try to go organic. Um, avoid vegetable oils. Uh, vegetable oils are in processed foods. Also, a lot of people, unfortunately, still cooking with vegetable oils, canola oil, peanut oil, those kinds of things. And, of course, they're in fried foods as well. Uh, try to avoid those. Uh, uh, they're just not good for you. Uh, consider planting your own garden. Okay, then then you know what you're getting is organic and and fresh, and it's also good to dig in the dirt. Uh, consider buying meat from local farmers. Get to know your local farmers. So this is in contrast to the Dirty Dozen. The Environmental Working Group came out with the Clean 15. So these are fruits and vegetables that uh, have the least amount of pesticides in them. Uh, avocados, kiwis mushrooms, I'm not going to go through all these, pineapple, but uh, you can Google this stuff and it's on there. Okay, uh, fortunately, our body has uh, natural mechanisms to uh, get rid of toxins, okay? The problem that we run into is, um, number one, a lot of us are unhealthy, okay? And so when we're unhealthy, then we're not uh, optimizing our body's ability to do that. And then number two, because of everything I've just mentioned, uh, we get so many toxins that our bodies get overwhelmed, okay? Uh, 
Uh, so I just told you maybe some steps to decrease the amount of toxins or toxin exposure. And then we want to optimize our body's ability to get rid of the toxins. And so ways to do that are to maintain a healthy weight. Uh, toxins can uh, be stored in fat cells. So, you know, you want to, again, maintain a healthy weight. Uh, we want to prioritize sleep. I loved what the, the previous uh, uh, presenter said about sleep. I agreed with all of that. Uh, and one of the best things you can do to optimize sleep is sunlight first thing in the morning, just as he mentioned. But prioritize sleep. Uh, our body, when we're asleep, again, that's where all those natural kind of detox mechanisms uh, kick in. Uh, exercise. So exercise is going to get the blood going, going to get the lymphatics going uh, to to help get rid of those toxins. Uh, drink plenty of water, filtered if possible. Uh, you wanna sweat. So when we sweat, we that's a, a one of the ways our body get rid of toxins. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the sauna. Uh, I've got one at my house. I'll never be without a sauna again. Um, and there was a, a huge study. I've talked to a couple people about this huge study in, in Finland. There was a 20 year long study that uh, showed uh, and it was just on men, but men that use the sauna four plus times a week uh, had a 30 something percent decrease in uh, cardiovascular disease and 40 something per, uh, percent decrease in all cause mortality, meaning death from all causes. So ton of health benefits from sauna. Uh, you know, part of it is the production of something called heat shock proteins. We won't get into all that, but I, I think a big part of it is just getting rid of a lot of those toxins. Uh, get outside. Um get sunlight, optimize your vitamin D, uh, get in the dirt, especially these kids, get them off the, their video games on a day like today, uh, get them barefoot, let the kids play in the mud, uh, get dirty. It's very good for the microbiome, okay, which in turn is, again, going to uh, kind of optimize their uh, detox systems. I don't care if they eat dirt, just get them outside, get in the dirt. Adults too, adults, get outside, you know, if you got a garden, uh, get dirty, uh, take your shoes off in the evening, get on the grass. Very good for you. Uh, and then fasting. Oh, uh, uh, stress management. I skipped over that. Um, you know, if you're stressed out all the time, your cortisol is high, uh, you know, you're going to have a hard time, um, you know, with your body's own kind of natural uh, detox mechanisms. So uh, get some kind of stress management strategy. Uh, fasting. This is more for adults, not kids, but fasting is a great way to, uh, you know, just get rid of toxins, uh, something called autophagy, where it's, it's kind of self-cleaning is, is, or self-eating is what it means, but uh, it's in a good way. And, and so I encourage everybody to do, um, you know, intermittent fasting is, is real trendy right now, uh, which is fine, good place to start, but I encourage uh, everybody to work up to doing an extended fast, you know, a couple of times a year, but you got to work up to that. I mean, you don't just go... You know, so I'm going to do a three to five day fast. But anyway, uh, it's very good for uh, very good for your your body and again detox mechanisms. Um, okay, I think that's it. Uh, there's my information. Uh, a lot of people have been um, interested in um, ozone therapies. It's something I do. Um, again, a family practice doctor, but uh, I discovered ozone therapy last year. We do IV ozone. Um, I didn't throw this in here, but it's actually another good way to uh, probably get rid of toxins and inflammation. And, and we've seen it do uh, a lot of really cool stuff with, with a lot of chronic illnesses. But um, I have uh, pamphlets in my tent uh, about um, ozone therapy and as well as uh, business cards over there. If you want to know more about what about what we do and our services, uh, they're all on our website. So. Uh, I feel like I was really fast, but we were a little behind, so maybe that's a good thing. Uh, and that's all I've got. So thank you very much.